Okay, welcome to my channel, Sliver Surfer One. Uh, today we are going to be talking about APS-C cameras versus full frame cameras. Uh, I'm going to try to clear up some of the mysteries between the two. The camera over here is an APS-C camera, and the camera over here is a full frame camera. This one has a smaller sensor. So we have the A6000 here, it's 24 megapixel, and the A7, which is 24 megapixel as well. The difference between these two cameras is the way that lenses, focal lengths, are affected. Um, this one's a full frame. The, the uh, sensor is about 2.2 times the surface area as this one. But when it comes to the focal length, this one makes lenses appear to be one and a half times shorter than they would on this. So this one would be one and a half times longer appearing on it. Because it's basically like taking a sensor and then cropping onto it because it's smaller. Okay, so what I have on here is a 35 millimeter 2.8. And this one's a Hexanon, a Konica Hexanon. 35 2.8 um, so what I did is if you take this one and you multiply it by 1.5 you get you get approximately 52 and on here I put a Konica Hexen on 1.8 52 millimeter okay so what does this mean this means that these will both shoot the same field of view. Okay, so this picture will look pretty much identical to this picture. Because this is a crop of this one. Okay. But, okay, here's the thing. When you take these two cameras and you look at the f-stops of them, this one, the f-stops will look about one stop larger. Okay, It's still the same, it's still a 2.8 f-stop, but because it's cropped, it'll appear, everything in the picture will appear larger. I mean, the depth and, uh, and the width look magnified. So what we, we have to do is, we put this one on 2.8, and we put this one on F4, the difference between the two is one stop, and that goes for pretty much any lens that you want to put between the two cameras. If you go up uh, about one and a half times the focal length uh, to a full frame, what you want to do to get the same look is go by one stop, okay? So say you have a beautiful... 50 1 to 1.2 lens on this camera here. Okay, so you're going to put this on there and you want something equivalent to this. You could take an 85 millimeter lens and put it on this one. And this one's an f2. Okay, so basically when you multiply this by 1.5, you get 85 millimeters or approximate. Okay, so what you, what you would be also doing is going up one stop to get the same depth of field with this one. Okay, so this one, if you want to get the effect of the f-stop 1.2, you would put this one on 2. Okay, the actual one stop up from this is 1.8, but it's a very small difference between 2 and 1.8. So you'd basically, shooting the 85.2 on this would be wide open, would be the same as shooting the 51.2 on that. Okay, so we'll take these ones away. Now say on your APS-C you have a beautiful 28 f2 lens you want to put on here. Okay, this is a nice wide lens, nice fast lens. Um, on the APC, unfortunately, it will only look 
like a 40 2.8 okay so if you want to get the same look as the 28 to 2 on your full frame you just all you need is a 42.8 okay so basically one stop of depth of field is what you're losing when you go APC as opposed to full frame because you know you put this one on here and you have an extremely skinny depth of field same with the 50 extremely skinny depth of field okay but you put them on here the depth of field increases the issue though is if you you have this one at 2.8 and this one set a stop up at f4 your isos are going to be higher on this one it affects your isos if you're doing the exact same shutter speed and you you want the same depth of field your iso is going to suffer on this one now full frame cameras generally they do handle noise iso noise better um, but it is slightly noticeable I don't tend to think that ISO is a seriously bad problem, but uh, yeah, just know that that's what the difference is going to be. So the benefit between these two sensor sizes, okay, what's the pros and cons? The pros of this one is you can take an average, it doesn't even have to be a fast lens, and you could shoot portrait all day with it, okay? 2.8 on this is going to look, uh, you know, more than enough to get uh, image separation, okay? Subject separation. Um, with this one, you'll have to get really fast lenses to get the same separation as this. Just, you'll have to get one stop faster. Say you buy a lens, and it's full frame, and it's 2.8, and you put it on this one, in order to get the same deal uh, with this one, you're going to have to get one that's f2. If you get one uh, for this that's uh, an f2, you're going to have to go with 1.4. 1.8 on this one would be 1.2 on this one. Uh, okay. Okay, so the benefit of this one here is when you get into the longer um, focal lengths, the telephoto lenses. Um, they're very expensive to get a fast telephoto, okay? So for 200, uh, 2.8, that's, that's a really expensive lens, or even a 300, uh, you know, F4. They're very large and quite unwieldy. Um, but you could go to this one, say if you want a 200 portrait lens on this one, that's uh, f2.8, you could put a 135 and uh, get one that's like a f2. And another thing as well, full frame, great for shallow depth of field, but what if you want to go the other way? So the benefits of the APS-C over the this one here the the full frame is when you're going with a macro or telephoto or architecture or um, landscapes you want to have a higher usually you want to have a higher um, depth of field okay so on this one on any camera you go over 11 usually or 20 or over 11 or 16 f stop you can get a lot of diffraction okay so if you have 150 millimeter 180 millimeter um, macro lens on this one and you want to go you know you want to get the same results you could go with 100 on this one or a 90 on this one at uh, and and you you'll see you'll get the same results as this one but you'll be doing it at a lower f-stop, about one stop lower. So you're not going to get as much diffraction to get the same uh, macro effect. You just have to make sure you have very high quality lenses. Because another effect between these two lenses is that APS-C shows quality problems with your uh, lens a lot more, like a little 
quality issues with you each lens okay so if you have this one compared to this one and they're the same lenses this one your chromatic aberrations are going to be about 2.2 times as much surface area than this one they're going to be 2.2 times less sharp than this one you're gonna <laughs> the lens is the factor in sharpness on most cameras okay um, so if you have the same lens on this one and you go to this one it's gonna show it's gonna be less sharp okay per area the ratio between sharpness and the size of the screen okay it's gonna be sharper on this one okay and all your chromatic aberrations are gonna be smaller when they go to uh, the full frame and all your your dust is going to look smaller on this one as well um, so keep that in mind as well so APS-C you got to have quality lenses on these they're a lot more forgiving um, I like both of them I don't you know I'm not trying to poo poo on this one but you do have to use better quality lenses on this one here okay that's why I shoot my 55 uh, Zeiss on this one a lot because it's a extremely good quality lens whereas I'll shoot like the 85 Jupiter on this one and they almost look the same quality um, but then when I put my Zeiss on here I can like crop in as well we'll get to the photo samples um, that I took between these two and remember on the photo samples on AP APS-C, I shot them all at 2.8, okay, so wide open, and I shot all these at f4. There is also an issue between uh, wide open and 4. Uh, it starts, it's a lot sharper once you start to close down the aperture. It's, it's very sharp compared to um, a 2.8 wide open, okay, anytime you start to close down the aperture, you're, you're going to get inherently sharper pictures. And this one will look a tiny bit dreamier and less sharp. Okay, So I'll get to the photo samples right now. 